The Original by Mary Robinette Cowell and Brandon Sanderson. I just want to get this out of the way right now. Every time authors collab, yes. It's one of my favorite things to see and it usually has just awesome results. It's like when you see two of your favorite bands get together and produce a song or an album. I just please more of it. So hearing that Sanderson was collabing with a new author got me excited because it's also a way to discover a new artist and that's what's happening here. Mary Robinette Cowell is someone I'm going to be looking into because this book had some strengths and some oomph to it and it didn't necessarily feel like it was all coming from Sanderson. In fact, this just felt kind of different and interesting. The original is definitely worth talking about. And if you'd like to see more than just my review today, I believe Murphy Napier is gonna be putting up a review as well. So go ahead and check that on out if you'd like to see more thoughts on this sci-fi novella. But let's go ahead and jump on into this review. The original is the story of a woman who is waking up in a situation and there is a very strong mystery in this sci-fi landscape. I'm not gonna say much more than that about the specific plot because spoilers are going to be a problem here and I'm going to avoid them at all costs. Now the specific setting though is we are in a world that has essentially solved death in a rudimentary way. You can essentially go to save points where you upload your consciousness and memories and if something happens to you then you can, okay, boop, boop, zip, boop, new body and you're back and ready and fine. There is also a ton of world building around this idea. There are people who lean more into the technological advances and those who detract. And interestingly, and one of the main driving like forces here narratively is the fact that there are extremes to this. People who really, really lean hard into the technology and people who really lean hard away from it and actually want to really uh, aggressively uh, attack it. There's a lot to praise here in the specific world building that's going on. I think these two authors, I don't know, you know, how this came about exactly, but they clearly did a lot of research into the progression into AI and the current debates that are going on around the morality of certain ideas that are theoretically possible with technological advancement. Tons of praise there. I love, 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 love that, especially for sci-fi stories and for novellas where, you know, technically you're very page count limited. You have to really tactfully choose every word sentence to be as beneficial to your story as possible, that was executed extremely well here. Something I'm also going to continually bring up with science fiction reviews is kind of related to that quote where it's like a good sci-fi author shouldn't just predict the car, they should predict the traffic jam and measure how much these stories really follow through with the uh, ideas and technological implications they're playing with. And the original does an extreme job of that. I would say like well beyond what should be expected by just a sci-fi novel. There is so much like, oh, okay, yes, we're kind of having this landscape where people like put themes over the surrounding around themselves. Like, oh, someone's gonna view a building different than someone else because they customize their theme of the world. And then they take that and utilize it to a great extent. And it actually affects the plot. There are implications here and there, small little nuggets sprinkled throughout way more than I would have expected for a sci-fi novella. An example of what I'm talking about here in terms of like thought through world building, there's a sequence that happens in a nightclub. And because people have these themes that overlay and kind of let them interpret the world around them differently in aesthetics, everyone in the nightclub is actually kind of in a different nightclub, hearing different music, different overlays of the like, decor around them. So you'll have one character, if you bump into them and like taste their theme, having this rager on along the lines of like, and then you'll hit someone else who their theme's like a nice jazz club and they're just kind of having this like, all right, all right. And the themes are so thick that these people actually have the like dances of those around them reinterpreted so they don't have to be distracted. And this is just more a minor example of what these themes do. They come heavily into play and I really like the dystopian-esque implications. There are a couple drawbacks, unfortunately, if you spend a lot of time in a novella on world building and moral quandaries, especially with us sitting very, very deeply in the main protagonist's mind in first person, your pacing's gonna suffer, right? Because you're spending a lot of the time available on these things while also trying to push through a narrative. So there's quite a few just like jumps here and stops and thinks. So that can kind of be a bit jarring, but it was well worth that one critical sacrifice where the pacing's not perfect, but I think the benefits outweighed the cost for what was actually executed here. If we're gonna go ahead and talk about some mild criticisms, like, okay, pacing wasn't perfect, I wanna just hit on a few others. The plot was engaging. I was engaged by this plot through and through, though I could call the ending at a certain point. Uh, I think these two showed their hand a bit too much with mainly some repetition of certain information. And from there, I was able to take a leap and go, I think that's how it's gonna actually unfold. And I wasn't 100% right, but I was like, 
70% in the right area, which for me though, that's actually not a bad thing. I'm not really a plot driven reader. I'm more character driven, so I'm okay with that. But I think some people are gonna be able to have in their like good read reviews, like saw it coming, hashtag I'm so smart. So get ready for that. Uh, character as well. I like this character, but I didn't necessarily like her. I empathized with her. I thought her situation was extreme and terrible. And, you know, I think she actually handled it quite well. But if you're someone who needs to like the protagonist, you might have issues with this protagonist as someone to follow. I didn't dislike her, I didn't hate her, but it's not like, oh, I wanna cozy up and go get a drink and like hang out with you. So, you know, some people really need that feeling. Those people usually don't like some of the books I like, so I understand. But aside from that, so much praise for this sci-fi novella. I think, again, the world building is really, really impressive. And for those who have actually not read more of the shorter side of stories for sci-fi, this could be a fantastic entry point. There are ideas here I've seen before in sci-fi, but there's just enough twists here and there that it actually did feel fairly original. Like this, uh-huh, the original, it's fairly original. Okay, that's comments. But it all kind of came together and the end result was very, very enjoyable for me. I know I get a lot of people who wonder about like, oh, is this more harder or softer sci-fi? Uh, I would say this definitely leans more towards the harder sci-fi uh, landscape of things with how many ideas are covered and talked about the morality, the technology, but it does not shrink away at all from the softer side of things where there's a lot of like character and emotional moments and this more focus on the plot. So it kind of has like a little bit of both worlds, but with the extreme focus on these questions and this tech, I'm going to go ahead and lump it in the harder science fiction. Sitting at under four hours, this is not something that's going and take you more than a day or a weekend to listen to, which is as I did. They sent it to me early with the audio file, so I listened to it. And special praise here. I normally don't like when there's music and things added to an audiobook for the performance. For me, it's just like takes me out of the performance from the narrator, who did a very good job for this book. But I did like it because it was very minimal. This was a minimally scored audiobook, and I think that actually really did benefit. Sometimes it feels like they can't hold back when they do this, and it's like over the top, and you got like these huge drums. No, they fit the atmosphere and the definite like pacing for the story and moments that were going on. So it all kind of came together quite nicely. I might have to reconsider my anti adding anything to an audiobook stance because this is the first instance where I'm like, okay. I, I, I enjoyed that. And of course, there's going to be purchase links in the pinned comment down below, as well as the description of the video. If you'd like to get this book and help me get a little bit of a, a little bit of a cut there, go ahead and check this one on out. Altogether, I'm feeling a pretty solid 7.5 out of 10. These author collabs, I'm always going to encourage. There's definitely some Sanderson Spice in here, and I'm going to go read more Mary Robinette Cowell to figure out what's coming from her as well, so I can figure out how this equation and result came to be. But anyway, let me know what you think of this one in the comments down below. And actually, let me know, are you interested in these kind of more sci-fi novellas, or do you like those big, thick sci-fi chunkers out there uh, where you can just spend endless pages turning? I got deep love for both. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.